excited today because uh, we're actually picking up some lungfish for the uh, the Woodford uh, Lake Gula. I've been wanting to get these in there for a while, and the lake is now uh, ready. Uh, plenty of life going on there, plenty of um, snails and eelgrass, so plenty for these fellas to feed. But we're just coming now to pick them up today. So we're here at um, out at Karoi, uh with Darren. Darren uh, breeds. He has a license to breed them. Uh, along with the Mary River Cod as well, so they'll be going in also at a later date. But uh, here today to check them out. Um, going to be releasing them a little bit later, and um, we'll show you some pics of that. And uh, what a great day! Just been waiting, been waiting about six months now for this to happen, and it's um, it's fantastic. So here we go. We got them, got them ready. Oh, isn't that? So they're about you're saying twenty, oh, about thirty centimeters. That one isn't yeah, he? They're a foot long. He's they having, are now. He's checking us out. His little eyeball. G'day mate, you're going to a really awesome habitat. Colorations and their back fins. And that beautiful back vein fin there. Awesome. Australian lungfish. And they're um, from the Merritt River system, southeast Queensland. And then they're also in the Brisbane River area, so the Brisbane River catchment. And they say they were introduced, but they're still wondering if they were actually there beforehand. No one really knows, I don't think. But um, uh, predominantly from the Mary River system. Um, not a fish you can get that up close to generally, I mean, unless you go right out and start looking for them. Uh, that's why I'm excited about Lake Gula. I mean, we have five and a half meters out there. We have these um, habitat zones full of uh, lilies and uh, eelgrass and snail beds. Mussels as well, they love mussels. So we have freshwater mussels in there. And this is just gonna be an opportunity to discover those, to go snorkeling gently through this and to see uh, three lungfish we're putting in now. I wanna, it'll probably be five in the end once uh, the lake, I think, to feel the lake can support it properly, uh, support them. Um, but to be able to visit them with a snorkel is gonna be pretty special, I think, and um, I can't wait. <laughs> Here's one of them. Um, it's gonna acclimatize him to the, to the water. Here he is. And he's a tagged one. Look at the markings on his back. We'll get to know those markings more and more as we um, as we follow these. You can see his uh, his four lower fins there. I'll let him go into this water here. There he is. What a beautiful fish. There's actually uh, six uh, species of these um, in the world: uh, South America, Africa, and Australia. Uh, there's four families. So Australia has the one family, I forgot which one of that is, but um, this is a very unique, this species, and probably the oldest oldest version in the world, I think it is. There was a one of these in the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago, it just recently passed away. He was probably the oldest one in captivity, uh, going on 80 years, I think he was. He was massive, so uh, recently passed away, so um, an Australian uh, uh, family or species. Um, we're going to acclimatise these now, and um, I've got three of them there and we'll um, slowly let them go into that water. There he is, they're quite placid, uh, but it's going to be so exciting to have them, to be able to discover them for one, and then just, just to know that we've created a habitat that, um, that uh, will support these as well. Plenty of snail, plenty of shrimp, um, plenty of vegetative, um, aquatic vegetation for them to feed on as well. So now I'm going to um, hop down in the water and we'll, um, we'll let one go. I want to direct them over towards over towards there. It probably would have been easier to do it off the beaches, but I want them to go into this zone here, into this uh, hollow log area, and into that reedy area over there. And you can see the water lilies going beautifully. So we're going to put them and release them out now. He's 
and the, just getting to know it a bit. It's, hasn't been in a big environment like this. He's been in a well, he's been in the largest area, but nothing like this. So this is pretty much like getting back out into the wild again for him. Um, let's get the other two. And get our next one now. He's the baby of the three. To meet up. Preservation habitat or habits is to just to sit very quietly and um, someone was telling me recently that they were um, approaching the river and they go down and have a look and then like it looked like it was they look like they're dead <laughs> because they don't move until you get right up to them and then you touch them and then just a slight touch and they just blast away with massive amounts of power they're incredibly powerful fish especially the big ones they can give you a good whack uh, this is a bit of a descriptive on how it works there's one wetland filter there that's the one down the back there, and then there's that intake bay, and then there's the other wetland filter there, yeah, down the back, and that one's up here. Um, and the life that we have in it. And we can add, now add lungfish to the list of uh, species that we have in there. We have probably about, um, I think it's about 18 different endemic species of uh, aquatic life in there now, including mussels. Mouth Almighty, we have Spangled Perch, we have the eel tail catfish, all the natives, um, gudgeons, we have the fire tails and the um, empire and the purple spotted or uh, purple cheek gudgeon. There's plenty of frogs, we have a few uh, uh, snake neck turtles in there as well. The water birds come and visit. There we have it, Lake Gula, now with its own little population of three Australian lungfish. And there we have it. Um, the release of the lungfish. How incredible. It's been a real dream and um, to have this happen now. It's been waiting for about, well, six months from this point, but I've always been, I don't know, wanting to do this. It's good. Mm -hmm.